Follow the nine-step graphing strategy. Be sure to find intercepts and asymptotes. So first we want to find the domain. To find the domain, you're going to take the denominator and set it equal to zero. The denominator is a difference of squares. We can factor that to be x plus 3, x minus 3. Set each factor equal to 0. We get x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 3. So we have to exclude those values from the domain. So drawing my number line, excuse me. I'm going to draw my number line and then mark negative 3 and positive 3 on there, but we're going to shade every other number. So writing out the interval notation would be negative infinity to negative 3, union with negative 3 to 3, union with 3 to infinity. So that's our domain of this function. The next part says, does it have any removable discontinuities? To check that, we need to see if we can cancel anything out. We know that the denominator factors into x plus 3, x minus 3, and there are no common factors, so since there are no common factors, there will be no removable discontinuities. The next part says to check for symmetry. The way that we check for symmetry, origin symmetry or y-axis symmetry, is to calculate f of negative x. It's 5 over negative x over negative x squared minus 9. It's negative 5x over x squared minus 9. So this negative sign right here is the only thing that's different between the original problem and this, the original function and this. So that means that we have the opposite, and the opposite is going to give us origin symmetry. The next part says find the y-intercept. The way we find a y-intercept is to let x equal 0, so we're doing f of 0, 5 times 0 over 0 squared minus 9, that gives me 0 over negative 9, which is 0, so I get a y-intercept of 0. Then I want to find x-intercepts. To find an x-intercept, you let y equal 0, or f of x equal 0. I'm setting my whole function equal to 0. That gives me 5x over x squared minus 9. I'm going to get rid of that denominator by multiplying by x squared minus 9 on both sides. I have 0 equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5, and x equals 0. So my x-intercept is 0. The next part says to find any vertical asymptotes. To find vertical asymptotes, you need to make sure your function is in lowest terms, which we've already done earlier. And once it's in lowest terms, then you want to set that denominator equal to zero and solve just like we did for finding the domain. So we've already found the vertical asymptotes, and they're at positive and negative three. So we have one vertical asymptote at x equals 3, and a second vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. So we would do this one, and we'd write x equals negative 3 is the leftmost, and x equals positive 3 is the rightmost. The next part is asking for horizontal asymptotes. So let's take a look at our rules. So our rules for horizontal asymptotes are related to the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. So let's find the degree. So 
So for our function, the degree of the numerator will be 1, and the degree of the denominator will be 2. And since the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, we're in case 1. And in case 1, there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. The next part, plot points. So we've got some x values that we want to plug in and find the y values. So for x equals negative 4, f of negative 4 is 5 times negative 4 over negative 4 squared minus 9. That's negative 20 over 16 minus 9 negative 20 over 7 so that's about let's say 2.9 for rounding so then we have x equals negative 2 we're doing this one right here. X is negative 2. Then Y, F of negative 2, is 5 times negative 2 over negative 2 squared minus 9. It's negative 10 over 4 minus 9. Negative 10 over negative 5 is a positive 2. Next one we're going to find is 2 x equals 2, f of 2 is 5 times 2 over 2 squared minus 9. That's 10 over 4 minus 9. 10 over negative 5 would give me negative 2. Last one here would be 4. x equals 4. So we're finding f of 4. f of 4 is 5 times 4 over 4 squared minus 9. That's 20 over 16 minus 9. It's 20 over 7, which is approximately 2.9. And I have a mistake up here. This was negative 2.9. So now we want to take and put all this together into drawing the graph. So draw the graph. I have a vertical asymptote at 3, positive 3. I have another vertical asymptote at negative 3. So that's uh, a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, another vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3, then I have a horizontal asymptote. These asymptotes act as guidelines for how to draw the graph. That's at y equals 0. I have an x-intercept and a y-intercept that was both at 0, 0. And then these other points that I have, negative 4, negative 2.9, negative 4, negative 2.9 would be about right here. Then I have negative 2, 2, negative 2, 2, positive 2, and negative 2, and 4, 2.9, 4 and 2.9 would be about here. And we're going to use the asymptotes as guidelines on how to draw the graph. So starting with this point right here, starting with this point right here, because I've got the, um, 
the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote right next to it, those kind of trap me between them. So that's how we draw the graph. These three points are going to line up to each other, but I'm also going to follow the, the vertical asymptotes that are next to those points. And for this other point here, I've got also the uh, horizontal and vertical asymptote that I want to follow along with. So I draw the graph towards the horizontal asymptote and towards the vertical asymptote. So that gives me this answer choice. Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.